sales, right, to show me how much big or how big he is. You know what I mean? And just hearing uh, Gina's testimony always brings me back. I forget, I forget sometimes how big God is. You know what I mean? But gosh, when you hear her story, it's just hard to hard to look at that and not realize how big God is. Amen? Right. It just gives you hope that whatever you're going through, you can make it through. You can make it through because you put your hope in God. Amen? And that's what she put her hope in. Amen? Yeah. Amen. You know, I would like to begin today with a bittersweet, you know, as we heard uh, Noel saying his welcome. And, you know, we were just hearing it, right? It's cool, yeah, Daddy and things. Uh, it's bittersweet. It's heavy. But a joyful heart. I want to say this with a joyful heart. You know, rest in peace to one of my greatest encouragers. Amen. 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 Um, one of my greatest mentors, my brother in the Lord, Kuya Danny Fontanilla. Amen. Amen. I mean, we can shout for joy with tears, you know, with tears in our eyes. You know, I just got finished hugging uh, JR back there, and he just walked in, and he was like, I had to go back to Nick, and that's why I kind of walked up a little bit late, because, I mean, he was hugging me so tight, he's feeling the emotions of how much this brother meant to us as a church. We've served in leadership all together, and, and, and Kind of got knocked up over here, this whole headpiece, but I guess you can hear me well, you know? Yeah. But, uh, you know, because we can we can shout for joy, but we got tears in our eyes, but he's finished the race, amen? Amen. 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 Yeah, and, and, and I feel like, gosh, you know, I preached last week, talking about how, how hard my 2017 was, and God comes back with a knockout blow. The following week, I'm like, wow, I, I, this week was... Just one of my difficult, most difficult weeks now. Yep. That's why I don't like to preach. Because <laughs> when I start saying stuff up here, boom, that's exactly what I gave it was something even harder. You know, and I'm like, gosh, I've lost one of my closest brothers, you know, earlier this year. And now, Kuya Daddy. And you guys share, you know, I say, I, I pray to God, I don't want to cry this morning, be over emotional, and, you know, put people in a different spot. But, you know, I, I just, it, Kuya Daddy was one of my greatest mentors. There, he yeah. just this was. You know, I love the church. He, he, I looked at him like a father. Um, you know, just one that always uh, reared me into leadership. You know, I, I shared with you guys when we got into our fights and things like that. It was pretty big. It was pretty to the point where he stopped talking to me. He literally stopped talking to me for like months. I mean, he pulled away. And uh, just recently, amen, uh, learning through mediation and learning through uh, reconciliation. That's why I'm so thankful to the Lord. I can stand up here with an with a open heart and be very grateful and thankful to my brother Danny Amen. that we were able to, to reconcile. Amen. 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 So I mean, that's why I'm like, I am so, I'm joyful. I'm joyful that he, he made it. He Amen. made it. He finished his race. And Amen about that, you know. Um, but gosh, you know, then I get hit with not only that, but, you know, just this, this week, my, my daughter, my, my oldest daughter, my 19 year old, decided to move out. And I'm like, gosh, you know, can this get any harder? You mean, can life get any more difficult? Uh, so it just, it just feels like it. it feels like a knockout blow, you know. You know, and it's it's it's, it's kind of like one of those times in your life where you feel like, like I felt okay, but part of me was kind of like, man, did I do enough? You know, this is my first time, guys. You know, my other one's little. I, I never had another a, a, a child that became an adult, and now she's decided I'm gonna go and do my own thing. I want to be independent of you and mom. That's all I know. And it's a concern I've never felt before. Because I was like, hey man, you know, I support your decision and this and that's what you want, but I, I can't stop thinking about her. You know what I'm saying? It's like, uh, did, did, did I do what I needed to do for you to survive? Are you gonna be able to find a job? Can you feed yourself? Can you do your own clothes? Can you, you know, she does all the stuff in the house. She washes the dishes, it's great. I mean, you guys don't count, it's great daughter. But now that she's out of my care, I worry. Now I know it. Those of you parents that have that, yeah. now I know what you're saying. <laughs> and uh, pray for me, pray for my family, pray for her, uh, because God uh, never, God always never fails. You stay on your world, right? Always never fails on me to show me how big he is. Amen? Amen. 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 You know, in times like these, when you just need encouragement, some push, some motivator, some inspiration, you just need something, some kind of a feeling that things will get better. This is, this is the time that I'm, this is what it feels like to me. When sometimes life deals you a hand, right? A hand that's kind of difficult to handle. I feel like I got a seven loose offset. If you play poker, if you do, I don't play it, but I do know of it. It feels like that's the lowest odds hand you can ever have to win a fight. You know, it's like, that's the kind of hand I'm dealt. And sometimes my life gets like that, and it's like that right now. It's frustrating. It's problem-some. Life turned out to be something it wasn't, I didn't expect it to be. 
You ever realize that in your life? It turns out harder than you expected it to be. And that's what propelled me kind of to preach the lesson that I'm going to preach today. Amen? Preach it. I mean, I, I got a little help from uh, someone online and things like that, but it, it's the very topic that I'm going to have for today is, is guys, I need some encouragement. Amen. I really do. You know, and if you guys, if you, you know, if you didn't pay attention to my lesson last week, I asked you, right, I asked you guys to be a Barnabas to somebody. And if you didn't get the benefit of that piece, then amen, this is what this lesson is going to be about. If somebody didn't be a Barnabas to you and didn't encourage you this past week, then uh, this is what this lesson is going to do for us today. It's going to help you to move beyond that step, amen? amen. If nobody has encouraged you, what do you do? Let's go to God. Uh, Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much. Thank you for trials. You know, gosh, I, I don't often say that, but, but I usually hate them. I usually hate challenges. I hate times in my life where I feel so low, so down, so weak, so uh, not at peace. That, uh, Father, it's times like these, Father, that you come very heavily into my life. Where I come to start to remember how much more I need you, how much more I need to be on my knees, how much I need to come to you in prayer. Father, we need encouragement this morning. I do. And all I can do, Father, is pray that this morning your spirit move in me, that I can encourage my brothers and sisters that are listening to the message this morning. Father, I, I pray that your spirit speak for me. Father, that it's not my will, that it's yours, God, but I can use the examples in my life to help connect with my brothers and sisters before me. I don't know the condition of my brothers and sisters here, but I pray that every word that I speak, Father, brings you glory and encouragement to each and every one's souls here that's hearing your word. Father, uh, please be with me. Be with, uh, be with the, the children as I always pray, Father, when I'm up here preaching. Be with uh, Joy, Father, and John and uh, and, uh, and uh, Jaja and their, their family, God, as Kuya uh, Dani has, uh, has now finished his race, Father, near you. Uh, thank you so much, God. Thank you for the service today. I pray that you are lifted up in your Lord, Father. In your Son, Jesus Christ, holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. So, you know, last week's application was be a part of this, right? Be a part of this. I'm going to encourage somebody. So, you know, uh, if that didn't happen, I, I guess I thought of be one to yourself. Right? If someone didn't encourage you, then be one, bar be a part of this to yourself. So the title of my lesson this morning is encourage yourself. Encourage yourself. Kind of sounds odd, right? Yeah. I was telling talking to Marsh and, man, you know, babe, that kind of sounds a little bit kind of... In the Western world, we don't think of that. It kind of sounds selfish, or it almost even implies you don't need anybody. But I, I, I want to throw out my waiver, my waiver, waiver, disclaimer, whatever you want to call it. That's not what I'm saying. All right. Okay, but encourage yourself. Okay, so if you click with me or turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 30, uh, I'm going to talk about basically David, right, as he was kind of fleeing away from Saul, who was trying to kill him. And uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 1 to 6, I'll read it out loud. It says, then it happened, when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had made a raid on the Negev and on Ziklag, and had overthrown Ziklag and burned it with fire. They took captive the women and all who were in it, both small and great, without killing anyone, and carried them off and went their way. When David and his men came to the city, behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted their voices and wept until there was no strength in them to weep. Imagine how much weeping that was. Now David's two wives had been taken captive, Ahinoam, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite. Moreover, meaning more than that, moreover, David was greatly distressed because the people spoke of stoning him, for all the people were embittered, each one because of his sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Now, guys, that's the NIV version, right? But I wanted to highlight something here. And that very last uh, uh, verse there, verse 6, when it says, But David strengthened himself in the Lord. The word there, strengthened, if you look in the King James Version, it's encouraged himself. David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And that, that, that's big to me. Well, well, one, because that's the title of my lesson. But two, we look at what this encouragement means. You know, this, this encouragement is, is a point where if you read what's going on there, if you heard me read it, David's went through a pretty rough time in his life. 
That's pretty rough. I mean, to weep to the point where you have no more strength to weep. That's like if you hear the cliche, I cried my last year. Right? I can't cry anymore. I personally have never been brought to that stage where I've been crying and crying. You guys see me cry almost every time I get up here and preach. But I can't recall a day that I couldn't just, I was crying, but there's nothing coming down anymore. Or I had no more strength to, to cry. That's where he was at. But let me give you some background of what's going on here. If, you, if you're not familiar, you know, guys, if, if, if this is in the book of Samuel, if you can get from chapters, maybe later, like 20 up to chapter 20, all the way up to chapter 30. You know, it's, it's a real cool story one day. Read it if you don't, you know, um, never have the time to. But David was fleeing from Saul. Saul was the king of Israel at this time. And, uh, you know, by the time we get to chapter 22, David's basically on the run. He's, you know, he's, he's, he's on the run trying to, he's fleeing for his life. He's hiding out from King Saul because his, his guys were not pursuing David. They, they wanted to take his life, really, is what, what was going on. So imagine, you know, and I, I can't do the whole story for you, but I can only, I can hope to assume that maybe you know about the David and Goliath story, right? David defeats Goliath, and, um, and then this is what's going on after. So, so now you got to you got to call. David was some young boy, and he 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 won. It was victory for the Israelites. He he took down the big giant, which is uh, Goliath. He was from uh, Gath, which is one of the five major cities in the uh, Philistine city. And that was the army that he basically had taken down. So of course now David's like this big star, you know, this guy that had the heart, you know, went out there, fought the battle, won. And so now, of course, to the king, he's kind of like, this is my main man. And this is King Saul, right? But now look at the position that he's in. Can you imagine being called the anointed one, right? Can you imagine?